हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अ लास्ट न्यूमेरिकल व्हिच इज बेस्ड ऑन रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ पोल्स एंड जीरोस बट इन एस डोमेन और यू कैन से इन लाप्लास डोमेन सो विल सी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल क्वेश्चन एंड देन विल मूव ऑन टू सॉल्यूशन सो अ लास्ट न्यूमेरिकल दैट इज अ प्रॉब्लम नंबर 6 Draw the pole zero plot of the given system, and the function is given x of s is equals to in numerator we have s square plus one, and in denominator we have s into s square plus two s plus five. So first of all, we'll find out the order in numerator and the order of s in the denominator. So look at here. In numerator we have directly s square, which means there are two zeros present. And in denominator, if I multiply this s inside the bracket, then the highest power of s is s cube, which means we have a three poles in denominator. So we will calculate the factors first of all, and from that factors you will get the location of poles and the zeros of function. So first of all, we will find out the factors which is present in numerator. Now, if we want to find out the factors, then what we will do? we will always equate our numerator with respect to zero so look at here now we can write s square plus 1 equal to zero but now i'll shift this one on right hand side so we have s square is equals to minus 1 now i will take square roots on both these sides then what you will get square root and square get cancel and we have on right hand side we have square root of minus 1 now we have s is equals to square root of minus 1 and we know that square root of minus 1 is nothing but my j or you can say i so we can write this value as plus j into 1 or else minus j1 if we take the square of both the functions or if we apply a square on both the sides then of course you will get the minus 1 as a value now so what we have s is equals to plus j1 and minus j1 and if you're going to solve further then also you will get the same result that is s is equals to square root of minus 1 so i can say that these are the values of zeros as I said, the order of S in numerator is 2, which means we have a two zeros in our function. And the values of two zeros is minus J1 and plus J1. Now, we will find out the poles. So, what we can do? First of all, I will equate first value of this pole or this S, I will equate with the 0. So what you will get our first pole is placed at origin now we will do the same thing with the second one also now i will find out the factors of this equation so you can calculate the factors by using calculators so what i have got my factors are minus 1 plus or minus 2j or you can say plus or minus 2i if you want to split these factors then i can say that i have got a three poles in denominator of this function then what are those first pole is placed at 0 second pole is placed at minus 1 plus 2j and third pole is placed at minus 1 minus 2j so these three are the poles of my function and these are the two my zeros of the function now i will plot the pole zero diagram for this function so we have got two poles and three zeros and this was our function basically in laplace domain we will always mark uh, real values on x-axis and it is represented by sigma and on imaginary axis we always write a j omega now we will place my poles and zeros values on this s plane basically this is our s plane or laplace plane now first of all i will mark the locations basically our zeros are placed at minus j1 and plus j1 now 
whenever we want to mark a zeros, we always use a circle. So let's say here we will write j1 or plus j1 and here we will write minus j into 1. Now, so these are the two poles. Now, we will plot our poles value. The first pole is placed at origin. So, we will write our first pole place is at origin. So, this is our origin place. So, I can say that here we have s equals to 0. This is the place of zeros. Now, if you look at here, then my second pole and third pole is actually addition or combination of real value and imaginary value. In this two side, we have a real value and the value is same that is a minus 1. So, first of all, I will mark the minus 1 position. Now, the imaginary part is a minus 2j and plus 2j. So, we will mark both the values. Let us say the upper one is plus 2j and the lower one is minus 2j. This pole is actually combination of real values and imaginary values. So, minus 1 plus 2j gives us this pole value and minus 1 minus 2j gives us this pole value. So, what I am going to do? I will find out the intersection of these two lines. So, this is the place where I will get s is equals to minus 1 plus 2j. And this is the place where I will get minus 1 minus 2j. So, we have plotted two zeros which is placed at plus j1 minus j1 and we have placed a three poles that is s is equals to 0 or we can say the first pole is at origin and next two poles are complex conjugate poles or you can say the combination of real and imaginary values. The second pole is minus 1 plus 2j and the third one is minus 1 minus 2j or you can say it is simply a complex conjugate poles or it is a combination of real and imaginary values. So, to find out real and imaginary values what we have done? We have passed one vertical line from minus 1 and one horizontal line from plus 2j minus 2j and this is the intersection point. At this point I can say that my minus 1 plus 2j pole is placed and at this intersection I can say that minus 1 minus 2j pole is placed. So, similarly we are going to solve various type of numericals which is related to poles and zeros. So, that's all for now. We will study a new topic in next video. So, thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda for further more videos. Thank you so much.